What is going on everybody and how are you all doing? Today we're going to unbox and give first impressions on the Polk R200 bookshelf speakers. So these speakers have actually been getting a lot of hype and positive reviews. So I had to see what they were all about for myself and of course share it with all of you. As you all know, I try to be as honest as possible, whether it's good or bad. I was not paid or sponsored to do this video and I bought these with my own money. So if you like that philosophy and my business model, why not support the channel on Patreon? The link is down in the description below or join the channel by clicking the join button right below this video. And yes, my links for products uh, down in the description are affiliate links. The few dollars that I earn from those links also help me make honest content just like this. Let's get right into this video. I'm Barrett, this is Speck of Tech. Welcome to the channel. The Polk R200 bookshelves claim to have some trickle down technologies from the Polk flagship legend series. And based on my first impressions and experience with them so far, I would have to say that's very true. But we are getting ahead of ourselves here, so let's get them unboxed first. I purchased them from a great local hi-fi store called Radio Crafts. If you are in the Calgary area, go see Tony. He's one of the nicest hi-fi store owners you will ever meet. Okay, so let's get into this box. All right, so let's see what all the hype is about with these Polk R200 bookshelves. That's kind of why I wanted to pick this pair up. So let's get into this box and see what it all comes with before we get any further here. So I actually reached out, I mentioned this in the video already, but I reached out to uh, Radio Crafts here in Calgary, Alberta, and he helped me out with getting this pair. So you actually get a really thick user manual. Surprisingly, there should be a lot of information in there anyway. And then, Take that styrofoam off. And then on the top of the box here, I'm not sure how that's going to come out on the camera, but um, it says caution and it shows that there's a tweeter just right here. So I guess what they're uh, referring to is don't reach around and try and pull it up because uh, the tweeter is right there. So I'm just going to lift it up by its bag here as long as it doesn't rip. And the same with this one. And that's all that's in the box. Yeah, there's just styrofoam on the bottom and nothing else so now that we have them out so this is the reserve lineup so it's i guess they're trying to go for a little bit fancier packaging they have uh, a nice soft cloth bag that the speakers are in and the grill which i kind of like the grill isn't just a straight flat black it's like a charcoal kind of color almost grayish so i kind of like that just something a little bit different is always nice to see on a speaker. And yeah, you can feel the tweeter poking through there. And you have this little Polk heart sticker. Pull the bag off. And there you have it, the turbine woofer and their new tweeter. I guess it's not new, they've used it before, but. So the finish on it, it's just, it's kind of like a sparkly black plastic vinyl, I guess. But I like the fact that the corners are, are rounded. The uh, Polk logo is nice. Like it's a pretty simple design. Like it's nothing too extravagant. But I mean the finish is nice. It's very well done. Like it's not, it uh, doesn't look like they rushed it or it's a cheap finish or anything. And then on the back you don't have the traditional uh, port that they have on some of the other ones. You have this little turbine style port which is supposed to help with chuffing. Very nice set of binding posts by the look of it. And that is a metal, sure feels and looks like metal around it. So that's nice, instead of just plastic, nice to have that. So there we have it guys. That's what you get in the box, not much. You get the speakers, the manual, and your magnetic grills. Thank you Polk for making them magnetic. Speakers that aren't going with magnetic grills, I mean, come on, Peg and Gromit is so old. Everything should be going to magnetic grills. I love me some magnetic grills, so. I am so glad that that unboxing is over. It was so hot that day in my house, it was crazy. But let's talk about price and then some first impressions. Really quick before we do, if you like all things audio related, consider subscribing, tick the bell icon if you do, and take just one little old second to hit that like button. I honestly appreciate it. So when talking about price, I actually feel that these speakers are very well priced for their performance. The R200 bookshelf speakers are only $649.99 US on Amazon at the time of this recording. But it is very typical 
cycle for the prices of pork products to fluctuate. So click the link down in the description if you want to know the current pricing. And for that price, you get what I think is a nice looking speaker. But at the same time, they aren't much to look at. You either like them or you don't. In this price range, it is a little more difficult to get a pretty speaker. Personally, I do like the look of the drivers and I do like the rounded edges. The cabinet seems well built and is quite inert. The black wrap is pretty basic, but it does the job. I do like the look of the white version, but unfortunately Radio Crafts didn't have stock on the white finish at that time. The binding posts actually look to be excellent quality and the surrounding plate around them is made of metal, which of course is much better than plastic in my opinion. The R200 are a ported design, which uses their proprietary X port, which is supposed to help eliminate port noise. They measure in at 7.5 inches wide by 14.1 inches high and 13.9 inches deep and weigh in at 19.1 pounds each, which in my opinion does make them a larger sized bookshelf. Polk's R200 utilized a one inch ring radiator tweeter and a six and a half inch turbine cone woofer and are crossed over at 3000 Hertz. Uh, this makes them a two-way design with a sensitivity of 86 dB, which is a good sensitivity, but I did notice they were not as loud as the Paradigm Founder 40B bookshelf speakers, which has a sensitivity of 89 dB. These speakers do dip down as low as 3.8 ohms, so that does make them a 4 ohm speaker. Uh, so make sure that you're using amplification compatible with 4 ohms if you plan on getting these speakers, although I do imagine any AVR shouldn't have much of an issue pushing them. And lastly, the R200 has a frequency response of 51 Hz to 38 kilohertz, plus or minus 3 dB. So that does cover the basic specs. Let's move on to my first impressions. Before hearing them, I set them up about two feet from my back wall with about a 45 degree toe in. Without any adjustments to that, I was rewarded with a locked in center image and some pretty impressive imaging. I did play with the toe in angle and quickly realized that the R200s are very forgiving with placement, at least in my room. Although they are only rated down to 51 Hertz, they do have some pretty impressive bass for a bookshelf speaker. With room gain and in a small room, I could see a lot of you being happy using these without a subwoofer. That being said, it is my opinion that pretty much any bookshelf speaker should be used in conjunction with a good subwoofer, preferably two. When it comes to the mid-range of these speakers, I was very impressed. Uh, it's rich and it is quite detailed for a speaker in this price range. And when it comes to treble, I was actually expecting these to be bright based on some of the other reviews, but I did not experience that at all in my room. Uh, the treble was very smooth and not fatiguing while remaining detailed and surprisingly airy for a bookshelf in this price range. To sum up my first impressions, guys, I really was surprised by these speakers, especially in their price range. I haven't spent enough time with them to say much more than that though. In a recent video, Andrew Robinson reviewed the Polk R700 towers, which are the largest towers in the reserve series. In that video, he asked a very important question, and that is, are expensive hi-fi speakers really worth it? with R700s performing as good as they do and at their price point. I'm paraphrasing there a little bit, but you get the point. I will say this, that question came to my mind when I was listening to the R200 bookshelves as well. I can compare them to the Paradigm 40Bs, which are about three times the price as the R200s. If you would like to see the R200s compared to the Paradigm 40Bs, then drop your comments down below. Remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or the comparisons of the R200s to other bookshelf speakers. Tick the bell icon if you do subscribe and please take just one short second to hit that like button. I honestly do appreciate it. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.